Hello, welcome to the Monitoring Academy seminar. This is lecture one. I'd like to introduce Professor Sean Roger. Hello, and uh, this is Mark Lefwich. Today, we're going to give you an overview of some tips and tricks that we've picked up this week from working with customers and our own environments. Hopefully, these will help guide you and help you in the future. Yeah, basically, this is we want to try and make this a slightly more informal discussion rather than the more structured videos and blogs that we put out. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy this. Okay, today we're going to cover some TCR and some ITM tips and tricks. So the first we're going to go over is with Mr. TCR over here. So first we have an issue where the reinstallation of the Tivoli Common Reporter 3.1 fails on Windows. Yeah, this is it, this deals with a very specific set of circumstances, but I must admit we do have a lot of problems with TCR reinstalls. Basically, as a general rule, actually, before we even go into this specific one, if you're going to try a reinstall of TCR where it's failed before, I wouldn't bother with the automatic installation. I would go and actually follow the manual and install steps. You will save yourself a lot of pain down the road. You really, really will. This particular issue is with TCR 3.1, and the problem is that when you do the uninstall, it doesn't actually remove all the folders. So that when you try and reinstall it, TCR goes, oh, hang on a minute, I'm already there. It all falls over and chances are you're gonna end up logging a PMR with us going, what's going on? The basic problem is that for some reason, and we must admit we don't quite know why yet, so we're working on it, promise, um, is that the, J the JVM process from Cognos doesn't stop. It keeps hold of the, uh, the folders, so they're not deleted properly. It's easy enough to get around, thankfully. Um, you have two choices. You can either go into your task manager, find the Java process, stop it, and then you'll be able to delete the folder. Or, and this is probably easier, just restart your machine. Yeah. Restart your machine, all the processes are stopped, and then you can delete the folder. But of course, if you can't do a restart for whatever reason, just go into the task manager, kill it that way. It is the guaranteed way. I know you've got production servers out there, but that's not always gonna work. But if you can get some downtime, do it in the maintenance window, it'll save you a lot of aggro later on. Yeah, I, I, I am aware that this is kind of the support answer to everything, which is quite simply turn it off and on and again. It works. It does it's work. fine. <laughs> Secondly, we have a case where the TCR prereq scanner is failing to detect the Liz SO1 library on the Red Hat 5.6. We've seen a couple of PMRs on this now, so it's probably worth mentioning as it may help some of you guys deflect from ever seeing this in the first place. Yes, we've seen a few problems with this in the past. The prereq scanner sometimes does not pick up packages. Um, it's it is a known problem, it's something we're working on. This is a specific one related to a specific instance of Cognos, however, the specific version of Red Hat. So this one is, your chances of running across this one, pretty slim. They but it's, The basic problem is that the Zlib package that they ship with Red Hat 5 and 6, it's a really simple problem. There's a sim link inside this that points to this specific SO.1 library. In this particular bundle, that sim link is missing. So prereq scanner comes in, tries to find the package, it can't. Simple answer, create the sim link manually. Most people are OFA with Unix, Linux, whatever, you'll know how to do this. If you don't, we can link to the tech notes on this. We'll provide full instructions on how to do this after this video. So as Sean mentioned, it is very slim chance you're gonna hit this, but that's part of what we're doing here. We've noticed something that's happened in the field. We'll put it on YouTube, you guys can have a watch and hopefully if you have got a setup similar to this you can have a quick check and hopefully you won't hit that down the line. And last we've got a curious little problem for the TCR here. This is where you've got a time zone on your machine that can cause problems with TCR 3.1 installs. Yeah, again anybody who's used TCR over its latest versions will know it's a bit pernickety when it comes to uh, installations. Everything has to be just right. This specific problem if you go into your current date and time, what you might see instead is your current time, no time zone is not recognized. Then, as I say in South Park, you're gonna have a bad time. That's just not gonna work. Basically, the problem is you're using a time zone that Cognos doesn't like. Find this out pretty quickly by going into your date and time settings on your Windows machine. Now, usually you'll have something fairly obvious. It'll say your GMT or it'll say your EST or whatever it is. But sometimes what you get instead is your, time, your current time zone is not recognized. So if you see that, as they say in South Park, you're going to have a bad time. Basically, your install is going to fail. What you have to do is change your time zone to one of the supported ones. There is a full list available in a tech note online. I'm not going to go through them all here because there are many, 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 but you have to make sure you're using one of them. So again, we'll provide a link to this specific tech note for you at the end of the video. Just check the box below. 
So that's everything from TCR this week, and now we're going to talk about some ITM things. Mark, I believe the first one you were going to talk about was a customer who wanted to export online offline systems, didn't want to use the command line, no idea why, but there's some people out there who are just more comfortable using a GUI, so you're going to talk us through it. Yep, definitely. So I was working with a customer on the site this week. Uh, they're not too comfortable with the command line. I'm super geek, I've always used the command line, so it's actually made me think a little bit. So today I'm gonna to show you a very quick way that you can export your online offline systems into a CSV file that you can then break down with any spreadsheet editor into very quick categories of what systems you've got online or offline in any ITM environment. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is obviously log into your TEP. From the enterprise workspace, right click, do workspace, manage system status. Here you can see, there's only a small quota here, but it shows the example. If you click on one of the rows and then do Control A to select them all, then right click and click Export. Give the file a name so you can find it. I'm gonna save this one on my desktop. Um, copy the same options I've got here. You just wanna export all rows to make sure that you get everything. Okay, once that's saved, go and find the file. As I said, this one was on my desktop. I'm opening this up in a spreadsheet editor. I'm going to highlight the title row of this and then just click on data and filter so we can filter down the systems. Once that's done, I'm just dropping these down to all the offline agents. So this is what the customer wanted was a quick export of all the offline agents. So they can provide that to their operations team. The operations team can then go away and find out why they're offline. Uh, very simple, very quick, made me think, not done it before. So hopefully that will save you some time if you want to do a quick way of getting some exports out. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. Nice and straightforward. Thank you. So Mark, one of the other common things, one of the other things we see a lot of PMRs about is the ins and outs of changing host names, specifically the yeah. CTIRA host name, yeah. CTIRA system name. There always seems to be a lot of confusion around these, so hopefully today you can shed some light on this for us. It's very true. We get so many PMRs on this subject, it is unbelievable. So I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of how to change the host name of an agent and why you need to do it in two places. So there's two parameters you need to set in the environment files for the agent. It'll be the INI or the MV files, depending on Windows, Linux split. The first one is CTIRA hostname. You have to put CTIRA hostname equals and the managed system name that you want to see for that agent. This is important. This parameter controls two key areas. The first is it will show the managed system status workspace. That will be the name that appears. The second one, if you do attack MD list systems, that will be the same name there. That will only change those two. It will not change in the TEPs until you put CTIRA system name as a parameter, so equals. It has to match exactly the same as you put the value for the CTIRA hostname. If it differs, you'll get different outputs in different places. So the CTIRA system name, that will change the hostname display in the TEPs and the navigation tree. You have to put them both together to change ITM as a whole. If you do one or the other, you will see strange results, different names for different outputs. It will make your life difficult, especially doing audits. So two parameters, CTRA system name, CTRA host name, both with the exact same managed system and you won't have any problems going forward. Recycle the agent, it will connect back in. So if you want to do this properly, you will change the host names, stop the agent, clear the offline entry from the TEPs for the previous name of the agent. This will remove it from the Thames database and it won't be seen anymore. Start the agent, the agent will come back online and you won't have any duplicates or old entries lying around. So very simple way, but a lot of people don't do this and we have too many PMRs for very basic problems that can be avoided, so take note. Okay, just very quickly to put you on the spot, um, now that you've explained all this, do we have some documentation that we can link to that uh, explains this in more detail? Definitely. So I'll put some tech note links and I've also blogged on this as well, so you can pick up those. It explains it in far more detail, where you need to set the files, where you need to set the parameters, everything's in there. So we'll drop the link again in the bottom of the YouTube and it'll also be on screen behind you. Excellent. All right, well, I think that's it for uh, this we're week. done. Yeah, so we'll be back again with our next instalment of the Monitoring Academy seminar, uh, Lecture 2. Keep your eyes peeled. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Bye. -bye. Thank you for watching this video at the IBM Monitoring Academy. We appreciate your feedback, so please feel free to use the comments box below. We'd also love you to check the thumbs up box if you appreciated this video. We have added several helpful links to the YouTube comments box below so you can find all our other content on social media. I would definitely recommend that you check out the blogs on DevWorks. Take care.